Uh, what's your name? Do you live around here? Can you play with us or not? It's always just the two of us here. Damn boring already. Can you come? Paano kung hindi makapasok si Cherry ko sa school? Wala mo nang uwi. Higyan mo ako ng isang buwan at makahanap din ako ng trabaho. Miss, mara ba yung pamilya natin sa Pinas? Sabihin mo kay Daddy, nakikinig kasi siya sa'yo para makauwi na tayo. Gusto mo ba dito sa Singapore kasama ng mga bagong kaibigan mo? Sabihin mo yan kay Mami, ha? Your parents will ever ask you where you wanna stay? Do you want to follow your mom or dad? That's the thing, I don't know. Bahai follows the story of a Filipino boy named Jericho uh, who struggles to find his place in Singapore as his family is contemplating about whether they should move back to the Philippines or not. And through his experiences with his friends, he realizes what makes a home. The first inspiration came from my personal experience when my family was actually thinking about moving back to the Philippines because our situation here wasn't uh, the best. The second inspiration to actually tell this story came from a feeling that I had, which was feeling like I'm in between these two places, where I feel like I'm in this liminal space, where I'm too Singaporean to be counted as a Filipino, but I'm too Filipino to be considered Singaporean. Because of the COVID, the second wave, that a lot of people are very cautious about letting us film in their house or so. And also, because our shoot was nearing the February period also, so it was nearing Chinese New Year and people like didn't want to take the risk. And then for cast, we had to, um, I had to go through like a lot of Facebook casting and ads, and I put it up on Telegram as well as the normal like social media that young people like to use because uh, we can reach out to a lot of people. But it was pretty hard to find people that can act well and can speak Tagalog well. It was hard to find a Filipino kid that could speak Tagalog really well also because. Nowadays, in this generation, a lot of Filipino kids, as uh, I heard from my friends, they cannot speak Tagalog at all, or they cannot speak Tagalog very well. So it's very rare to find such a kid. There were some shoot days where it was like extra hot, humid and all that, so everyone on set was thirstier and hungry. Snacks and drinks would deplete very fast, you know. Like, I think there was one of the shoot days where Daniel finished a whole pack of like dewberry biscuits, you know. It's a crew favourite. From pre-production, we already knew we wanted it to be a very naturalistic style. Uh, our main references was uh, House of Hummingbird by Bora Kim and E.E. by Edward Young. Uh, to us, were very naturalistic. So that was taken into account when we were doing pre-production and how my lighting techniques would uh, translate over to the actual film. Yeah. Where are they going to learn that? Don't be able to play with them, anak. Okay, lang yun. Don't worry about it. In fact, you should make more friends. Working with Jeremy was very fun. Like, um, I'll be honest, I learned a lot from this project. Not just um, from you know the technical aspect, but um, mental aspect too about what to expect as a camera assistant. And now I gotta say I don't regret working with him. I I learned very valuable lessons from him. Ah. Everything I did, I needed to make sure that it doesn't affect anyone in a negative way. Uh, I needed to make sure that I'm on the ball at all times. Since I'm in a HDB flat, there's a lot of Wi-Fi signals. There's a lot of radio stuff that happens there, so there's a lot of interference. So it's very, very hard for me to get a proper frequency for me to hook onto so that I can record my sound there. But luckily, Sennheiser's equipment made it a lot easier. From a budget standpoint, I couldn't get uh, many big lights or big diffusion to cover the entire set. 
So, especially for our outdoor scenes, I really wanted to have uh, the ideal lighting because of the naturalistic style. I didn't add the lights, I just... Uh, we waited for cloud cover to come to add diffusion, so the hard light is not that glaring on for the viewer. And also, when the sun is at the correct spot, it casts very nice shadows uh, on the ground, which will enhance the naturalistic visual style of this film. Sound design was very new to me. I uh, had to kind of teach myself from scratch on how to get specific effects to happen, such as that scene when Jericho was in the dining room and he was hearing his parents argue and I needed to get that effect where it sounded like he was zoning out. Hindi ka nagpapadala ng sobra sa pamilya mo. At least ako, inaalagaan ko yung pamilya ko. Yung pamilya natin. One of the scenes that I enjoyed shooting the most was the montage scene where the kids were training and learning how to play basketball through Jericho. I enjoyed it because I was able to let the kids be kids and they just brought out the youth in them. I was looking for kids that actually had the personality of the roles that they were playing so that when it came to set, they wouldn't have to be acting, they would just be themselves. He was telling us like someone has to control the kids. I thought to myself, why not I take the initiative and take care of the kids? More of the kids matter, you know. And being a guy who plays sports a lot with like generally in the street soccer court with like kids and all that, I'm very used to handling them. Uh. Hi. What do I do? Say hi. I wasn't really exposed to like Filipino culture be before doing research. Sometimes I I will ask the director itself about how the house it will be and the concept itself and also like watch more reference films and also like the Filipino short films also to like kind of understand what the Filipino culture is like and also do some research for it. Yeah. I think initially I was quite worried that I would like misrepresent the Filipinos. So prior to that, I really had to like do my research properly and see how like they dress themselves and how they what are the some important household items that is placed in the house. So at least you can like elevate the Filipino culture within the film. I think because you work on it for so long, you sort of like forget what it's about. Throughout the process, it's like incomplete, so you can't really tell. But now that it's complete, I think it came into its own, and and it's a story I think that we all wanted to tell. Yeah. I think to me, Baha is quite an interesting story because uh, it touches on something that is not commonly told by other storytellers. And for me, since I was able to learn more about the Filipino culture through research and working on this project. It was quite interesting to me. So I wasn't working on something that is quite localized, I would say. So I was able to expose myself through research and like discussion with other people also. I feel like uh, we all work towards this one goal of trying to help Jason tell his story uh, in the best way possible. And I think we, we, we achieved that.